Good evening. We're coming on the air a bit earlier than usual because of breaking news at this hour. A grand jury here in New York City has just handed up an indictment against former President Donald Trump, making him the first former president in U.S. history to face criminal charges. This, of course, is unprecedented. The former president accused of paying $130,000 in hush money to Stormy Daniels in the weeks before the 2016 presidential election. Again, the news just coming in moments ago, according to multiple sources, the Manhattan grand jury votes to indict Donald Trump. I want to bring in our investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky, in lower Manhattan tonight. Aaron, what have you learned? Word came down just a short while ago, David, that a grand jury that has been meeting here since January has just voted to return an indictment against former President Trump. The indictment is currently under seal, so we don't know the specific charges, but the grand jury had been hearing evidence about Trump's alleged role in that hush payment you mentioned to Stormy Daniels. Hush Factual. I've never voted. Uh, and so I'm not saying that with pride. I'm hardcore MAGA tonight. I'm, I'm har I will be voting. I am hardcore MAGA. I've never voted. I, I did. You know, I observe Trump. I'm somewhat yeah. supportive of Trump, but they have made me MAGA and they have made me ready for whatever is next, because what they are building for young people, I, I can't I can't sit by and just let it happen without raising my voice and without willing being willing to sacrifice whatever so that kids don't live in a communist Marxist society. These people that think the government is going to take care of them don't understand history that they've never studied history. They don't understand how tyrannical a government is. <laughs> what, what's if they have their way? I, I, if they have their way, we're all catching hell except for the elites. And yet, all right, guys. So the left wing liberal media and the progressives finally got the masturbation material that they've been searching for all of their lives. The eight House Democrats have recently voted to advance articles of impeachment. We'll impeach him first and then indict him. Yes, the president, a sitting president, can be indicted, even if the president were to somehow find some way to terminate Mueller, the, the indictments would continue to grind. You can impeach anybody on anything. Uh, you can try and indict. He is not functioning as the president of the United States. Frankly, if he ever gets indicted, he'll have insanity as a defense, <laughs> I suppose, from a criminal charge. Um, but it, it, it's hardly, you know, this is a serious matter. You're starting to hear people talk about the possibility that Donald Trump leaves office in two years and then finds himself in the crosshairs of these New York prosecutors. This sitting president with Locke and Steve Bannon, the, the whole enchilada, the whole company, indicted by next week. Why not pursue it? and see what happens. Merrick Garland, if you indict Trump, you'll be my person of the yeah. year, of the decade. The only thing worse than indicting him would be not indicting him. Would be folly not to indict them. Donald Trump is an ordinary citizen and is committing crimes right now. I like the idea of Mark Meadows going to jail for the rest of his life, but I still think that the committee has laid out that the person on top of all of this, in charge of all of this, doing all of this, was Donald Trump. I think now for him not to indict, frankly, would cause this country more harm than even if he indicts and there's a hung jury or not a successful conviction. I okay, which is Trump getting indicted, okay, and possibly, basically, very likely, going to get charged with the crime, which will make him the first former or sitting president to be charged with a criminal offense because he allegedly paid Stormy Daniels, who was a porn star, money, Okay, uh, basically for her to not say anything about him having an affair with her. Now, this is all alleged. I don't know if he actually did that. I mean, I can imagine there's a chance that he probably <laughs> seen some of her movies and was like, hey, I want to be in a movie too, right? <laughs> I'm trying to audition. But, uh, you know, hey, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he did. Uh, but his former lawyer, uh, Michael Cohen, did serve prison time for campaign finance violations that... Mr. Cohen claims uh, came at the direction of Trump, okay? Um, but, you know, federal prosecutors up until this point have declined to go after Trump uh, for these alleged violations. But, you know, hey, this guy, Alvin Bragg, uh, who probably wants to be governor of New York, maybe mayor of New York City, maybe he wants to be president one day, he wants to be a Democrat Party hero and superstar, decided to go after Trump. Uh, for what we really don't know yet what it is because he hasn't actually really been formally charged. We don't know exactly what they're charging him with. Presumably, it has to do something with campaign finance or maybe, 
you know, something to do with how he wrote down his business expenses or something like that. Um, and I am told by my sources that this is 34 counts of falsification of business records, uh, which is probably a lot of charges uh, involving each document, each thing that was submitted as a separate count um, okay. in a couple of matters. We really don't know. But presumably, again, this guy is trying to go out to Trump as a political ploy. OK, it's a political attack. He's a pawn of the Democrats. OK. He's uh, trying to interfere into the 2024 election. It's very clear and obvious what's going on here because whether or not you believe what Trump did was a crime, in normal cases, whatever they're charging them with, uh, they wouldn't do it, especially if it was a Democrat, right? If it was a Democrat or probably even a normal person, um, this wouldn't be a thing, okay? They would not be going after him. The only reason they're going after him is because he's Trump, and again, they're trying to influence the outcome of the 2024 election so yeah as you can imagine it's not just the mainstream liberal media that's excited about this okay they're wetting their pants over it, right it's like a wet dream for them uh you also have you know liberals and, and progressives as well too that are you know very excited about this ah! it's happening it's happening baby alvin bragg down there in manhattan and the uh 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 uh, grand jury has voted well the grand jury has voted to indict trump now you know we've been watching this because michael cohen had been testifying and trump came out i think what maybe a week and a half ago now and said that he was going to be indicted on tuesday and everybody was on indictment watch but it didn't happen oh but we were watching that news earlier today and we saw increased uh security measures around the courthouse and we said well what's going on Catch up for the walls. Some tea towels, of course, very absorbent for all the MAGA tears. What's a gift basket without some fucking fruit? So oranges it is. Mug with some popcorn, because we've been watching on the edge of our seats. And some bitters, because we are about to see people showing their fucking asses. Sharpies, so you can write your own truth, no matter what. And of course, some fucking Kool-Aid, because y'all are in a fucking cult. So mark your fucking calendars, and happy fucking indictment day. It's finally fucking here. Yeah, so apparently Trump supporters are in a cult, but this person was quite literally waiting for Trump to be indicted. They made a basket. Uh, they have F Trump paraphernalia. Yeah, I mean, I, I think <laughs> these people are actually in a cult. And I don't think that this is going to turn out the way that they think because Trump's still going to be allowed to run for president. And if anything, this honestly is going to make Trump a whole lot stronger. I'm going to get into my reaction, uh, my raw reaction after this but you know somebody that's not so happy about this is actually joy reed who you would think would be jumping for joy until she heard ron DeSantis come out and basically state that he's not going to cooperate with uh the soros backed <laughs> manhattan district uh da's uh extradition request which again is pissed joy reed off to the point where she's trying to play the race card i don't know how she is doing mental gymnastics to make this about race but somehow she did take a look it is a statement without dignity. Uh, the governor of Florida does not know the facts, so he cannot talk about questionable facts in this case. He doesn't know them. Only the grand jury knows, and this is a sealed indictment. So he's making a statement about something he doesn't know the answer to and throwing out, as you said, Andrew, dog whistles. You know, historically, this um, meme, this idea among uh, the right that African-Americans, that black folks who are uh, in positions um, are controlled uh, by some Jewish overseer who's pulling their strings. That's what that statement reads like. And perhaps this governor should maybe read a history book to speak because he might not understand what he is channeling, but he is channeling an era in American history that is one of the most ugly that he's probably not allowing to be taught in school. But that idea that this prosecutor, and by the way, it's not just this prosecutor, Andrew, I'll, I'll let you go on this and let you have a final word on it. It was a, a grand jury that looked at facts, that looked at evidence, and this grand jury took a vote, which is part of our system. And so for the governor of one of our largest states and most important states to throw out a miasma of words that are meant to trigger uh, the far right for his political ambitions that really do sound like that old meme that this black prosecutor must be under the secret control of this, you know, murky Jewish millionaire. That could be 1950, and it is it is not dignified. It's beneath, the, it's beneath the dignity of a governor. Absolutely. Look, I mean, we let's let's get real. This country has a history um, and, and, and one that is is not just in uh, something that goes back to the 18th and 19th century. 
yeah, so again, Joy Reid is not happy, right? She's accusing Ron DeSantis of throwing out dog whistles or racist dog whistles uh, because he calls Alvin Bragg a George Soros-backed DA, which he is. I mean, this is just a fact. Again, according to the left, facts are bigotry. But in regards to Ron DeSantis and him not cooperating with an extradition request from New York, um, you know, as governor of Florida, at least from what I've read, uh, he has limited power to stop it, okay? He can't really stop it, but he can slow it down um, and make New York go to court, make them fight for it, which probably is the politically smart thing for him to do, okay? The politically smart thing for him to do is to not co cooperate but he would only need to do that if Trump refuses to go. If Trump is like, I'm not turning myself in, I'm not going. Which, I mean, at this point, I, I mean, it's probably likely that Trump will, right? He's just going to show up. He's just going to try to fight it in court, and it is what it is. Um, so that being said, uh, the point of this video is not to get into the legal stuff because, again, that's not my area of expertise. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys my opinion on what I think this means for Trump politically um, and then kind of go from there. Now, in my opinion... Low-key, I, I think that overall, it's kind of good for Trump. Because, I mean, it's not like he's actually really going to serve hard prison time. He still can run for president of the United States. And anything, this makes him a martyr. Like, this is proof, right? This is absolute proof that the establishment, Democrats and Republicans, really, are after Trump. And they're going to do anything they can to stop him from becoming president in 2024. I mean, this basically almost guarantees that Trump will be the Republican nominee in 2024, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure Ron DeSantis is pounding sand right now at what's going on because at first he made a political miscalculation by not coming out here from the get-go and saying, look, I'm going to stand in between uh, this happening as much as I can as governor. Uh, he learned his lesson real quick and he switched because he knows that, well, if he complies with the extradition request, that's going to look really bad for him considering that his poll numbers have basically plummeted like a rock ever since he made that statement, right? Ever since he made the first statement about Trump potentially being indicted and being extradited to New York where he said, well, I'm just not going to get involved. I mean, basically what they've done is that they basically guaranteed that Trump is going to be the guy in 2024, which honestly is what the Democrats want. I mean, they, they basically said it out loud on The View. Which is, um, I have been saying at this table for months, I think Ron DeSantis is the most overhyped politician in America. I think this notion that he is who's going to save the GOP from Trump and he's going to soar the nomination, it's overhyped. He had a good midterm election being reelected in Florida. You, what, who else would they go elect? Well, no, but no, and unquestionably, like he, 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 listen, he got reelected, he did a good job, but this is a man, I want to see two things. I want to see him sit down with a neutral interviewer like a George Stephanopoulos and actually answer tough questions about he his policies. Can't. I've never seen him no. do a major, you know, national sit-down interview. That. And then secondly, you don't beat Trump by not going after Trump. I want to see him take a punch at Trump and how not, he's not, not gonna, physically. He's going to miss because because he's a dweeb. <laughs> well, that's the thing is I, I just... DeSantis is what they call a dweeb. <laughs> and and Trump is the one who needs to get the nomination because then the Democrats will win. He's a, he's a two-time loser isn't already. That a risk? Hello. But he also yeah, so the quiet part out loud about what they want, right? They want Trump to be the nominee, and I think that this is their way of doing that. Now, last thing I want to say is this. Um, I want people to understand. I mean, I, I had this same reaction when the FBI first raided Mar-a-Lago. This is how the game is played. Democrats don't fight fair. Democrats don't worry about taking the high road. Democrats play dirty. And they just get dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. We just saw, guys, Christians get murdered. Christian children get murdered by a lunatic. And Democrats came out here and defended the lunatic. They're defending the lunatic. Okay? This is how they feel about people who disagree with them politically. Democrats don't give a damn about violence. They don't give a damn about arresting political opponents. That party is a party of extremists. This is what we're dealing with. And this is why I try to tell you guys, the Republican Party is too soft. Republicans said, no, we're not going to arrest Roe v. Wade protesters, even though they're straight up breaking federal law, right, by trying to intimidate Supreme Court justices. We know exactly what they were trying to do. Oh, we're not going to arrest them. We're above it, right? Uh, they haven't done much of anything yet about the Hunter Biden thing, right? Uh, are they really going to try to impeach Joe Biden 
Probably not. Now, I understand that some of those cases, you know, they have a limited power to actually do anything. I mean, some of that is just on the DOJ or whatever. The government's been run by Democrats. But I want to hear some promises. Hey, we're going to arrest you, right? We're going after these Roe v. Wade uh, rioters. Okay, we're going to arrest you. We saw what you did. We know who you are. We're going to arrest you. As soon as we take power, we're going to get you. Right? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to hear. This is why having a soft Republican Party is just not the way to go. You can't be soft on these people, man. Because they're not being soft on you. They throwing everything they can at the GOP. And the GOP is just taking it up the butt. And this is just another example of it. This is why, again, these it's almost like these, these people are useless. And part of the reason why is because uh, half of the party's on board with it, right? Like the Mitch McConnells, they're on board with this because they don't like Trump. So they want to see Trump locked up. But again, the way this can backfire on the Democrats is that I think that the normal average everyday person that is paying attention to what's going on is going to see that this is an actual witch hunt. Like this is actually legitimately a political witch hunt from the Democrats where they're straight up locking up political opponents. They're locking up political opponents for petty crimes to try to keep them from running. This is blatant election interference. And I'm just saying this because I, I, I read comments and stuff like that in, you know, different forums where, you know, the people may be more moderate. They might not necessarily be, you know, right leaning or whatever. They might be left leaning. And I, I think that the general reaction from people who are more moderate, more independent is like, yo, this is messed up, right? This is actually effed up. Like, this is straight up a political uh prosecution like they're straight up going after him to keep him from trying to run for president or to try to influence the outcomes of the primaries or the elections everybody knows and everybody can see that and if anything that could embolden people to support trump and to say yeah i mean i'm gonna get behind that guy because the establishment the powers that be clearly don't want him to be president they're after him so i mean we know for certain that with the republican base that this is a great thing for Trump. Trump is probably low-key a little bit, kind of happy, okay? Now, part of him is upset, definitely as well, too, because he had to deal with it, he had to go through it, but at least for the Republican nomination, I mean, he's basically secured it. Ron would probably better off just not even running at this point because I, I just don't see any uh, way for Ron DeSantis to beat Trump with this happening. Now, again, the question is whether or not this is going to be enough to get more people on Trump's side, because I definitely don't think he's losing anybody with this. He's ain't losing nobody. If anything, he stands to gain in 2024, uh, you know, as the GOP nominee with this happening, in my opinion. So, again, you know, takeaway here. Again, this is why we need tougher GOP politicians. This is why you can't be soft. Unfortunately, uh, we don't really have that. And two, uh, Honestly, I think this is probably a lot more positive than it is negative for Trump in the grand scheme of things. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.